just sitting here shivering. <laughs> I'm just trying to con trying to convince myself to uh, continue here. It's a good day. Look at the rain. It's just crazy. Still a lot of snow here. And uh, there's the old tire and the tube. The tube's got a hole bigger than my fist. So I'm trying to motivate myself to do this one. Uh, I've got the the bead broken. I just this one was a little tougher to break the bead. I guess maybe there's more rust in there. I don't know. But look at the it's it's really due. Uh, the last thing I want is I'm in the middle of some big job. I want to get finished, and this tire goes flat. So. I'm going to put the uh, both new tires on and the other reason the biggest reason my ass my wife asked me why why do you need to change both I said you absolutely have to change both because look at the tread on this it's almost like a beach ball there's nothing left there and if you've got a brand new tire on one side and a worn out one like this on the other you're going to destroy your differential it's always going to be spinning on this side if you use it in the winter or in mud you you know you're going to be stuck constantly you know, I guess you could probably get by, but I, I wouldn't recommend it because, you know, it's only 500 bucks more. It needs it anyway. This tire is going to end up going flat one day. And, uh, you know, you do one, you got all the tools out, you might as well do the other one. So, I'm going to spray. I've been using WD-40 around the... I spray it on the rubber and the metal and my tools as well to try and get the... Uh, Get that thing to slip over. Uh, oh, I'm shivering. It's supposed to rain like this for three, four days. Bucket here. I'm going to chain it up to the bucket. I'm going to put a couple of wood screws, same as the first one, on the tread here. Put the chain around the bucket and the thing won't fall over on me because once the rim starts coming out, it wants to fall towards you. Yeah, so I think uh, I'd rather be doing this on a rainy day like this. In, uh, in a heat wave with humidity, so that's why we're going to continue on. Okay, this one's about to go on tubeless. That's why they're so cheap. Picked up the tires, I got two brand new valve stems. Hard to do by yourself. Okay, so the whole job 
It took uh, 30 minutes to get the old tire off. The second one was much more difficult than the first one. I didn't time the first one. The uh, new tire, about 16, 17 minutes to put it on. So, but the step in between, you can't forget, is you got to clean every bit of rust off and uh, do your best to, to make sure it's got a really, really good surface. Two coats of paint. Actually, I put three on uh, the second one. It was so rusty that I thought the third coat would be kind of necessary. And uh, the cleanup, especially where the valve stem goes. The original tires that came with that backhoe were Firestones. They are really good tires. I opted to go with these um, Primex Razorbacks. They, uh, they're quite a bit, they're cheaper than anything else on the market. The, the best tires I, I know of are, uh, they're Michelins and they're $2,200 each, 2,200 bucks a piece. It's just, uh, not off, not an option for me. Uh, this thing's not going out working every day. So this is an affordable, uh, you know, the, the two tires cost less than I thought they would. So we're, uh, we're in good shape. Got uh, brand new tires. Uh, anybody can do this. That's why I'm doing this video is, you know, someone tells you you can't do this on your own, you sure can. Uh, there's a technique. You got to make sure the bead of the tire is right down in that little valley. It's There's like a sweet spot. It, the tire will come off, and if it's not there, it will not come off. But uh, I have that one tire wrench, tire uh, pry bar. It's not a wrench. And then I have two regular, just, I call them mule skinners. And they're big pry bars. I should have two of those tire pry bars. But uh, I got it done with those three tools. So this, uh, I hope this video can help you guys. It's not that hard to do. Um, whole job. If, if you take the painting out of it, you'd be done in probably an hour and a half, two hours. But a tire shop wouldn't do the painting. They wouldn't take the time to paint the rim. And you'd have to pay for two service calls. One to come and take the tire off. And then while you're sanding and painting, uh, the guy's gone and he comes back. So you pay another service call. So it's just more economical for me just to do it myself. And then it's done right. Because if you put a tire back on that rusty rim... It's going to leak for sure. It may not be for a month or a year, but it will definitely leak. And I think uh, the way I did it, it should last a long time. Okay, well, moments ago, we, uh, we got it on. <laughs> Hardest part is getting it full of air because it does not want to seal around the rim. But there's a secret uh, spray device you can use for that, which is probably illegal, but uh, we use it anyway. So, yeah, paint job. I put some yellow paint. That was primer, that gray stuff that I used the other day. I didn't read the can. I just saw gray and I slapped it on there, but it's good to go. There's two brand new, brand new backhoe tires. The tube's still good. I think I'll let the kids use it to go swimming. And uh, this one here. Hardest part was, uh, well, there's a lot of steps. You gotta clean all the rust. You gotta put a couple of coats of paint and new valve stems and uh, my WD-40 for a lubricant to get it back on the rim and even to get it off. And uh, that's about it. So the extra step of uh, removing all the rust and putting paint on makes it go on that much easier. This is what I use for the uh, lug nuts. Ceramic Extreme Permatex. So it's, I think it's fairly new, this stuff. I think it's only been around maybe five, less than ten years. I don't know. It seems to work. It's kind of purplish color. Everybody says around here that it's better than that silver stuff that we used to use or anti-seize yep well 
Thanks for watching.